Hi everyone! Last week I shared a video um, making backgrounds out of um, acrylic stamp blocks. These are the stamp blocks that you use to mount your rubber mount your rubber stamps to stamp onto your pages, but you can use them for other things as well. Now most acrylic stamp blocks come with a gridded side and a smooth side, and I used those last week, as some of you will remember, to make these lovely pages um, by adding acrylic paint to um, one of the sides of my acrylic stamp pad and randomly stamping over the page and I used a couple of different sizes um, both the gridded side and the smooth side to achieve these lovely background pages here so these are just some of them um, and I just think they're gorgeous you can use any colours you like um, and for instance this is a good example here um, of where I've used the smooth side and the gridded side for some just lovely lovely texture so you can see the grids in that the, the the same with this one here there's the grid um, here's the smooth side which um, leaves a lovely dendritic pattern so you just get some really interesting pages um, in between colors I was using my brayer just to get rid of the excess paint um, so that I could add another color without um, creating any mud and so I ended up with these pages here as well and then I promised that I would share um, some ideas as to what you can make with them. So those are the pages. Um, for any of you that haven't seen um, last week's video, then I'll leave the link to it in the description box below. And I must say thank you everyone um, that watched and took the time to comment. I received over 13,000 views from that video. Absolutely astonishing. So, um, so thank you very much indeed. And this is what I've come up with. I've made some little um, concertina files. Some of you will have seen similar ones that I've made um, before. I um, made one for a recent giveaway um, but both of these were made using one sheet um, of these backgrounds. Um, now this page here it's 250 gram cardstock and it measures 11 and three quarters by eight and a quarter. It's just for the for us in the UK it's just um, the size paper that fits into your um, home photocopier um, and that's how both of these were made. These are incredibly easy um, and you can make these using stuff that majority of you will have already floating around your home. Um, a roll of duct tape, um, some washi tape. This is washi tape that I buy from um, the pound store here. It is three rolls for a pound. Works absolutely fine. Um, I've used some um, extra acrylic paint as well and envelopes. A um, couple of different sizes. I've got um, a wad of these letter envelopes here um, and then some um, C6 size envelopes as well. Um, but just have a look at your stash because providing you've got envelopes um, that are smaller, just slightly smaller than half of, of this page, you can use what you like and you can also cut them down as well and I'll show you how to do that um, in a minute. So this is pretty much what you're, you're looking for when you're searching for some envelopes to use with this size paper. You want an envelope that's going to, to fit in with a flap over, over the top. So I've got this envelope, it fits neatly in there and I've got room for a flap over the top. You can see that this envelope is too long and so that one's going to need to be trimmed off. This one here um, is the right height. Um, again, I've got room for my flap but um, the envelope is too short so I would need to trim some of the, the paper off. Before you build your envelope structure for inside, you're going to take one of your pages, um, one of your backgrounds and you're going to add some acrylic paint around the outside. You can do exactly the same thing with um, an, a, a stamp pad if you want to but I just find it's, it's better to use acrylic um, paint. Um, you'll put a dab onto your mat and just add a border all the way around and I use acrylic paint because it's got a polymer in it and so it just makes the um, outside edge of your paper much much stronger because of the, 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 the plastic and so you know these are absolutely ideal for putting in your handbag or, or purse as you call it in the US we call it a handbag here um, and it's just going to make it much more durable and um, you know stop the edges from, from curling quite so, so easily so either you use um, some paint preferably or an acrylic um, uh, ink pad just to add a border um, because you know it not only strengthens it but um, it frames it as well and just makes it look nice. Now I'm 
going to make a folder using these letter envelopes here and what you'll want to do is you want a little bit of a border so I'm putting my envelope here and then I'm going to mark it just to the inside of the the border and then I'm going to um, use my paper trimmer just to cut off the outside edge um, of five envelopes I want um, a concertina folder consisting of five envelopes um, you can use an exacto knife um, and a metal ruler um, if you don't have a paper trimmer now before you trim your envelope you are going to want to seal it closed first so there we go seal it like that because otherwise your envelope will fall apart and then you can see that I've trimmed the excess um, amount off the edge and I've also taken some off this top part here so that I've got an envelope that is now um, shortened at the one side but also opened um, at the at the top so that I can put things inside it and I've just taken a smidge off the top there and by a smidge I mean um, just that much that much there just so that um, I've got an envelope that's open at the top. So I've trimmed my envelope down to size um, and then I've sealed it using some of this silver duct tape um, this is just the cheap stuff from a local store it's not the original but um, I found that this works just as well and this was a pound for a roll I've also got it um, in black as well um, and the way that I did this to make it easy for myself is um, my duct tape measures two inches um, so I've drawn two lines um, an inch away from from the edge just so that I've got a guide as to where I want to apply my duct tape just so that it's even on either either side um, so I applied the duct tape first and then I want to apply um, some washi tape let me just move this out of the way a second because I'm just going to show you quickly how I do this this is just washi tape from the pound shop um, and you get three rolls for a pound and I found that this is just just as good as, as any other sorry I'm going to stand up to do this just so that I can see where that line is and I'm just going to line it up again to that to that line I've drawn a line at the top um, like this my um, washi tape is um, a centimeter and a half so um, this is three quarters of a centimeter from from the edge so put that down and um, then I am just going to trim I'm going to um, sort of turn it over what's this I've just dropped my water um, then I'm going to trim the edges like like this and then you're going to start off in the middle and you're going to bend that washi tape over so starting from the middle inside the flap and just just fold it fold it in um, so that you don't end up with any buckling and then do exactly the same on the other side um, sorry if I get my head in the way just whilst I'm looking at what I'm doing and again I'm just going to trim those edges so trim there and trim here and start off in the middle of the inside of the envelope and just fold it over all the way along and that just strengthens the top of that envelope because just remember it's you know only thin paper so this just makes it um, a little bit stronger and neatens everything up as well so I have done this now to all five um, of my my envelopes and that's what they that's what they look like um, and then I've added some of this double-sided red sticky tape this is incredibly strong stuff I don't know sort of you know what it what, what um its correct term is but it's just red double-sided sticky tape and very very strong um, and I've just added some here here across the top then and and here just so that I can seal my envelopes um, together so I've got it on the back I only need it on one of the, the envelopes on the back here and then these are all going to, to stick together and then that's the, the one that's going to go on the back there. And the easiest way to get them to, to stick properly um, is just to take them as a stack, so shuffle them so that they're all nice and nice and neat like that. Hold them down with your hand and just take some of the double sided tick, sticky off like that secure it and just work your way along do this to all five oh come off you like that okay so those are all nice and secure um, and then you are going to want to add some um prit stick um some glue stick okay so we'll add some some glue stick just to, to the center here like like this and then you can peel the rest off and stick it down one by one by one. 
So we'll stick that down, sort of smooth it down, go to the next one, do exactly the same thing until you've secured all five of your, your envelopes. And this way, um, that just makes life a, a lot easier um, so that they're all in the right, right position. So this is my concertina file now, all glued together. And you can see that that's just nice and strong because of course we're doubled up um, in the edges, which has added strength. Um, because we didn't take the tape all the way to the edge, we've got the concertina thing going on. So that's what it um, looks like. So now we need to add the cover. And so what I'm going to do now is add some double-sided tape all around the edge. And this time I'm going to go right to the edges on, on the sides, front and back. And as soon as I've done that, I'll come back. Right, so I've applied my double-sided tape to the front and the back of my envelope. I've also put three strips in the middle as well, just to aid with the adhesion. And then you're going to grab your background and you are going to fold it over. And this is important. Do not make a mistake when you are doing this. You want your concertina opening at the top, not on the inside, because otherwise, you know, you're not going to get able to get into it. So concentrate while you're doing this and make sure that you get it the right way up. Not that I'm speaking from experience. Um, and then what you're going to do as well is just add a little bit more of your glue stick just in the areas where you don't have that red score tape. Um, just to add a bit more of, um, of stickiness to help it all stick down um, well. So there we go. And then we are going to peel the red score tape off. Um, so we'll peel this off. Three, two, one. There we go. And just put that um, in the in the bin. And this is where you really do need to concentrate. So I'm going to stand up to do this. Um, you just want to really make sure that you concentrate on putting this in the right place and just making sure that you put it slightly um, inside that border as well and press that firmly, firmly down. Then you are going to sort of fold, fold over like this and just concentrate on pressing that firmly down as well, making sure that you've got it even on both edges. Then it's easier if you turn it round and pull it towards you, because again, you're just going to fold over just to create your, your flap. So now what I want to do is add some more glue just to the edge here. Sorry, I'm standing up and sitting down to do this just so that I can see clearly what um, I'm, I'm doing. Um, and then again, I just want to get rid of the backing of that tape and that last piece there. Let's just put these in the, in the bin. And then again, oh, stuck to me. And then fold, fold over. And again, just really concentrate on making sure that you've got that sort of in the, in the right place. There we go. And that's what you have ended up with. Um, but what I want to do now is add some um, more duct tape to the top of the page here because for one, it sort of tidies up the, the, the back of your painted background. Um, and again, it adds some um, much needed strength as well. So I am just going to get that duct tape as close as I, as I can. You can obviously spend more time doing this than, than I can. And then flip it over and trim that that edge. In fact, I'll do it this way around, it'll be easier. There we go. So that's all nice and, and neat. And then for the edge part here, I'm going to have it on the on the edge. And I'm going to take that all the way to the to the end, and this time I'm going to need to trim um, both both edges. Let me just unstick that. That's why I'm working on a sticky um, craft sheet as well because this stuff is just incredibly sticky. So trim that edge, 
and then we can trim this other edge so this too. is what my concertina folder looks like now really nice and, and neat all nicely finished off around the edges and um, I just think they just look so professional nice and sturdy as well um, because of all the tape and the paint that we've added around the, the border and so what I want to do now is add a closure I've got a little tin full of brads here and I'm going to use this purple one so we'll just take that off um, I've measured across the top of my flap here um, and I've put just a marker in the middle because that is where I want to add my brad I'm just looking at my other one to see how I did that so I've got my mark here and I'm just going to use my pokey tool just to go right the, the way through then I'm going to add my brad and I'm going to, rather than sort of pressing it down really firmly, I want to leave a bit of a gap because I want some room for my string um, to be able to um, be tied uh, around. Um, so I don't want it um, too tight. So I've left a bit of a, a gap there. Um, let's have a look at that. And then what I will do is twist that round and I'm going to add a little bit of um, duct tape. So I've got some that I've already cut here just to hide uh, um, that metal um, fastening and also of course they're quite sharp as well I don't want it coming undone so so that's that all nice and secure um, then I want to um, add a tie I'm just going to use some baker's baker's twine here so I'm just going to tie um, a knot in the end I've doubled it over and I'm going to tie a knot um, in the end here like this um, and then I'm just going to use a piece of wire. Um, oh, I've forgotten to grab my piece of wire. Let me just I'm just go going to one. use a piece of wire as a needle to be able to thread this through. So again, I have made a pencil mark um, and I'm just going to go through to the other side. Um, let me just double check that that's in the right in the right place. Yep, there we go. So I am just going to go through again with my pokey tool right the way to the other side. Be really, really careful with this because a pokey tool is incredibly sharp. Um, so I've wrapped my baker's twine around this makeshift needle and I'm going from the inside, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, and I'm just going to pull it all the way, all the way through. There we are. And then I'm just going to secure that with another piece of um, duct tape. Again, I've got another piece at the ready here and I'm just going to stick that to the inside just to make sure that that's firmly in place. Can you can you see that in the inside which will stop it sort of you know tearing and, and pulling and then you through. can either add some beads onto the bottom of the strings as I've done done here or just leave them plain and just tie a knot in the end um, just to stop the strings um, fraying and I just think that makes a really really lovely um, either gift or you know it's nice to sort of you know put maybe ephemera or some of your bits and pieces in um, now I know that lots of you are members of various fa Facebook groups where swaps and things are going on so I'm just going to give you some more ideas as to what you can add inside these to give them away as as happy mail i've taken some of the original backgrounds a stage further and i've just added some circles and some squares to them so here we go that's what i've created and these are just so easy to do no need for a tutorial i will explain i've used a couple of darker colors of acrylic paint i used Payne's gray indigo and white and i've grabbed some bottle lids i've got a juice bottle lid um i think that's off deodorant um a glue stick and one of my spray bottles and I've just dipped it in paint and just added various random circles all over the page like like that. Um, I even added some squares on some of them as well by dipping one of these makeup sponges, the little square end, into some paint and also applying that to the page um, as, as well. Um, so just to add some further embellishment to some of these, these pieces. And I've filled one of my pockets with some of the bits and pieces that I've made. So let me just undo it and show you what um, I've got in here and as I say you can either keep these um, you, yourself or you can give them away in, in Happy Mail just some ideas of what you can do with some of those painted um, papers I've cut one of the pieces down to artist trading card size ATC size um, I've used one of my own homemade um, butterfly embellishments I've got a video for how I made these if anybody is interested and I'll leave a link in the description box below um, and then I added one 
one of the um, Tim Holtz um, chit chat words. In fact, it was a slightly smaller one um, that I've got in here to the bottom. Um, and that's an ATC to trade um, with somebody or, you know, give away whatever you want to do. Some of the smaller pieces that, um, that I had left, I've just inked around the edges and I've just added some chit chat words. These are great embellishments for people to add to, to journal pages um, or, you know, tags, ATCs, what, whatever you like. So that's one idea of things you can make. You could make a little notebook out of um, one of the pages. Um, this is a very similar page here, but, you know, fold it over, ink around the edges. Um, this one here has been lined with some, some book paper and I've used distress ink. Then I've just added some vintage um, note paper inside and I've hand sewn it um, with a piece of um, Cot cotton thread. Um, so that's one idea for a little notebook. Um, another little notebook I've, I've made here as well using a scrap piece of, of leather. This is um, a leather sample that I picked up from the scrap store here in, in the UK. And again, I've just trimmed off that, um, that edge there and I've hand sewn just using some um, baker's twine this time um, in, inside. So you can sort of put little notebooks inside, especially if you were keeping this in, in your purse or, or handbag. I mean, how lovely to have a little notepad in here just to you know write your shopping list or what have you um, you can make some tags with the um, leftover with the with the pages as well there's one here again that's been decorated with a butterfly embellishment and has got one of the Tim Holtz little quotes on be brave another tag here um, I've made some little <coughs> note cards as well. Um, I've got some three by three note paper. I've also got some here that I picked up from the pound shop. These are um, the ones that um, you write your name on to put on um, a, a, a guest table. Um, so again, I just cut out a little piece of um, the, the, the paper and added um, a little quote. Um, I made the envelopes for these myself as well because these didn't come with any envelopes. They just came in this pack here on this pearlized paper and so I just used my envelope maker just to make um, an envelope the right the right size these ones came with with an envelope these came in a pack here um, Oh, I've got a piece of string there. So little note cards. There we there we go. So, you know, you can keep those if ever you want to send a gift and write a little note to somebody. You've got some of those at hand. Um, and then, you know, so, some of the leftover scrap pieces of paper as well to make some more of those little um little quote cards if, if you want to as well so I'm going to keep some of some of those in there um, and then some leftover stamped stamped images too so you know you can use all of that paper to make all kinds of things so I hope that's inspired you to either have a go at making some of these backgrounds if you haven't done so already or for those of you that uh, got straight to work following last week's video I hope you'll have a go at maybe making some of these little concertina pockets um, I'm off to um, have a play now with all of these bits and pieces because I want to um, fill this one that we made earlier with some, some goodies. I've got a couple of Happy Mails that um, I want to send out. But I shall leave the link to the um, video where I showed you how to create the backgrounds um, and to the video where I created these lovely butterflies as well. I'll leave those in the description box below for anybody who um, would like to watch. I would really appreciate it if you like this, if you would give me a thumbs up. I say that every week, but it really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. Um, Feel free to share this video with your friends as well. Share it on other other, other media. Um, and let me know what you think in the comments below. So take care, everyone. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.